Hello everyone. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We sure are glad to have you with us today. We are making a main dish <laughs> that is absolutely fabulous. This is one of our favorites and has been for our entire married lives. It is something that we both love, our girls loved when they were growing up. Everybody we have served it to loves it because it is just so tender. And that's why we call it So Tender Swiss Steak. It's really steak and gravy, but we've just always called it So Tender Swiss Steak. So it's not hard to do. There aren't very many ingredients, but it does take a minute. So don't get discouraged by that. This is really easy, I promise. We're going to start by using one cup of all-purpose flour, and we're just going to put that in some kind of a pan that we can use to dredge. And I did kind of pack that in there, as you can see. We're gonna just use, some, use a pan that we can dredge with. And to that, we're going to add two teaspoons of salt. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but that's not all going on our steak. A lot of that will stay in that flour. And we're going to use one teaspoon of black pepper. Now, in addition to the salt, pepper, and flour that we're going to use to dredge our steak, we also need two pounds of round steak. Now, we were out of round steak from the beef that we had butchered, so I did have to go to the store and buy some. And the best I could find were two packages that were about one and a third pounds each. So I've got a little over two and a half pounds, but two pounds is really what this recipe is made for. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing, but normally I use two pounds of, of round steak. Then we're gonna need a little bit of oil to fry our steak in before we bake it. And we're not gonna fry it until it's done, we're just going to brown it on each side. So a little bit of oil, maybe two, three, four tablespoons of oil, whatever you think you need in your skillet. Then we're going to need a medium to large onion that we slice and just separate into rings. You can see how those just fall apart into rings and you want to make sure that they're each separated because you do want rings and I'll show you why in a few minutes. Now you also need two cups of boiling water. And when I get ready to use this, I'm going to stick it back and it's already hot, the steam's coming off of it. But I'm gonna stick it back in the microwave and get it boiling. We do want it to be boiling. And to that water, we're going to add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce just to flavor our steak. Now, after we bake our steak, and it has to bake for about two to two and a half hours, then we're gonna make some gravy. And to make our gravy, we need just a little bit more salt and pepper. We're going to use one fourth, not much, just one fourth of a teaspoon of salt and an eighth of a teaspoon, just half that amount, of pepper with one fourth cup all purpose flour and I think a cup and a fourth of beef broth to help thicken the pan juices from our steak. Okay, I'm going to start by putting my oil in my skillet. And I'm not going to measure that out, I'm just going to put some in there just so. I'll have something, and it's not deep. It's not like, you know, a lot of oil that the steak would be submerged in. Do you need to turn that on now? Um, I don't think I will, because I need to dredge my steak. And I'm going to move this over here, where I can dredge my steak. And then after I dredge it, I'm going to put it on a platter here, just some kind of a plate or a high plate or whatever you have that you can put it on. But you do want to get that salt and pepper mixed into the flour. One thing I should have done before I started this, I am going to put some of my onions in the bottom of my baking dish. And I have a pretty good sized baking dish here. This was actually my mom's baking dish. And it is the dish I have used every time we have ever made this. So, 
when we got ready to do this today, I told Melissa, I said, I have to find that pan because that baking dish, I cannot make this <laughs> in something else. Isn't that funny how we get used to making something and we just feel like we have to keep doing it that way? It's funny that you associate this cookware with that. Yeah. This bakeware with yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know why, but I do. Okay, so we're just going to put a layer of onions for our steak to lay on. And we have more onions. We're going to layer them as we go. Onions, steak, onions, steak, and so on. So I've got my onions in the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to start dredging my steak. And one thing I have to do is cut my steak into pieces. Now, when our girls were at home, we cut them a little smaller because they just couldn't eat a big piece of steak, when they, especially when they were younger. When they got to be teenagers, we didn't cut them so small. I would normally have cut this in about thirds. I usually try to do it about the size of my hand, but you know, it's just Melissa and me. So I'm just going to do them in half. So I've got those two and this one. And I'm just going to cut this one in half. So that'll give us four pieces. Now, this steak will even freeze. After you fix it, after you're finished with it and it's cooked, if you have leftovers and you just can't use them all, this freezes really well. We put this in individual containers or containers that held enough for two of us. And we just... Keep it for later. And all you have to do is let it thaw out in your refrigerator overnight. And you have so tender Swiss steak ready to go. Now, I will tell you that I like to kind of pull this steak apart. I don't know if you can see this, Melissa, but see how there are cracks down in there and in the um, fibers of the steak. And I like to get some flour down in there. I just think it really helps brown it well. And here, you can see this side better. See see there? Absolutely. So I'm just going to kind of pull that apart and rub that down in. Okay. So I have one. And we're just going to do this with every piece of our steak. Just get it down in there really well. Make sure the whole thing's covered and just lay them over to the side. Now, once we get enough for a pan full, I'm gonna start my oil now. Once we get enough for a pan full, we'll go ahead and fry one pan full while we're dredging the others. Um, you don't want to dredge them all at once and then have to wait, or I don't. I guess you could. I don't guess there's any reason you couldn't do that, but I like to dredge them right before I'm going to fry them in the oil. Okay, this is our last piece. I'm really looking forward to this meal. This is like one of my very favorites, especially for beef. Yeah, Melissa loves this meal. I do too. I think the anticipation too as you're smelling it while it's baking in the oven. Oh, it smells so good. It does. Well, speaking of baking in the oven, this has to bake for at least two hours. I usually bake it at least two and a half. I don't think it would hurt it to bake three hours or a little better. Um, that made it perfect for us to do on Sunday for lunch. We would get up in the morning, we would get this together, get it in the oven, and leave for Sunday school and church. When we got home from Sunday school and church, it was ready. So, you know, our kids would come through the door saying, what's for lunch? I'm hungry. And that smell would be wonderful. And that smell would just about knock you over when you opened the door and walked in. And I always put mashed potatoes and corn with it. I, it just really goes well with this. So this is perfect if you're going somewhere like Sunday school and church, 
because it has to bake for about two and a half hours or so, which is just the right amount of time. Okay, so we have these steaks ready. Let's put these in. See if our oil is hot. And it's not. Here's the way you can tell. I'm gonna get a pinch. If you take a pinch of flour, can you zoom in on that, Melissa? Yes. And you drop it in, it should sizzle if it's ready. And you can see that did not sizzle. It just sank to the bottom and laid there. So that oil is not ready. When that oil is hot enough and we're ready to fry, we'll come back and fry them. Our oil is pretty ready. You can hear that sizzle. So we're going to add it in here, add our steaks, and let them start to cook. I don't know if I can get all four of these in or not. I'm not sure that I can, but we're gonna try. How long for each side? Just until they're brown, I don't know, maybe three, four, five minutes. We'll just have to watch them, check them. But we're just gonna let those fry until they're completely brown, and then we'll come back and move them over to the pan and do the next batch. Our first batch of round steak has browned on both sides. Now, it is not done. There's no way you can eat it right now. It's just been browned on both sides. It's still pretty much raw in the middle because we're going to bake it. Also, we have heated the oven to 325 degrees. You wanna go low and slow. Our second batch of steak is in the skillet and it's frying. So while it's finishing, while it's getting brown, we want to put another layer of onions right on top of these steaks. It's gonna be flavor and some moisture. So we just wanna put some on there. We're gonna put some on top too after we put this next layer of onions. You mean meat. I mean the next layer of meat, right. Okay, so let's check our meat. Now that looks good and brown to me. I'm going to turn the fire off, and we're just going to layer this in. We're not draining it completely. We'll let a little bit of that grease drip off, but a little bit of that will be fine in there because that's just flavor. Okay. So there's our steak in the pan. We've turned our fire off and now we're gonna finish off with some onions. We just wanna make sure we have onions all over the top of it. Just separate those rings. Just want, as they cook and that onion juice runs out of there, you want it just to run down over those steaks and flavor them really well. So make sure you put some all over them. Don't leave any steak out. Make sure it's all over every bit of it. There's a little piece of onion and another little piece of onion. Okay, now, Melissa, I'm going to move this right over here by the Worcestershire sauce. And my water is not yet boiling, so we're going to let it come to a boil and then we'll come back for the next step. Our water has been boiling. We're going to add two full tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. If you get just a little bit more, it's not gonna hurt. It's just flavor. But you want at least two full tablespoons. And now we're just going to stir that up and pour that right over our steak and onions. As you can see, it's not covering the top layer, but it's ready to go in the oven. So we're going to cover it. We're going to put it in that 325 degree preheated oven for at least two and a half hours. Well, the recipe has always said two, two and a half. 
I usually do at least two and a half, and then we'll come back and we're going to make gravy to go over it. We'll be back. Our steak is out of the oven. That looks delicious and smells fantastic, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> How many times in the last two and a half hours have we said, we're starving? <laughs> it smells so good. So we're just going to remove the steak to, I'm putting mine in a nine by 13, but you can just put it in anything. You can put it on a serving platter or a bowl or wherever you want to put it. And I'm just moving mine right over here. You can stack them up, spread them out, it doesn't matter. But I am gonna get most of that juice off of them because we're gonna make gravy with that. All right, let's get these last two pieces out. Okay. I'm going to try to get some of those onions out of there too. Because we don't need those in the gravy, really. It won't hurt if they're in the gravy, but we don't need them in there. Okay. Now, I am going to cover this with a piece of foil just to keep it good and hot while we make the gravy. We're going to take the juices off the steak and get those into a pan and boiling. So let's just move right over here and get those in there. Let all that get in there. I'm going to Start the fire. It won't, well, I would, I hope it won't take long to get those boiling because it was boiling when it came out. Now, while that's coming to a boil, we have to combine our one fourth cup of all purpose flour, our quarter teaspoon of salt, and eighth teaspoon of pepper, and our one and one fourth cups of beef broth. I just do it in a jar because it's easier for me. I just put a lid on it and shake it. Try to get all those lumps out of there. You don't want those sugar or sugar flour lumps in there. So I just shake it while this is coming to a boil. And it might take just a minute, but it will soon come to a boil. You can see that our pan juices are boiling. So we're going to stir in our broth mixture with the flour, salt, and pepper. And we will bring that back to a boil so that it will thicken and make a gravy for us. And we'll pour it over the steaks. Now we do probably need to stir this fairly constantly, maybe not every second, but it's going to thicken quickly and it could burn. This pan's pretty good about not burning, but it could, and you can see over here, it's already boiling around the edges. So look how thick that's getting already. And that looks really good. Nice gravy. And see how easy that was? We just took those pan juices off the steak, put them in a pot, brought them to a boil, combined our broth, flour, salt, and pepper, stirred it in when it was boiling, and we have gravy. Look at that. Pretty quick, wasn't it? It was really quick. That's why we loved it so much on Sundays when we were making it a lot. Of course, now that the girls are gone, we just don't cook big meals like this as often. Okay, I think that's going to do it. That's pretty good gravy right there. So. Get our 
your foil off. And I will move the gravy over and we'll pour it right over our steaks. Now I'm telling you folks, you just don't get better than that. There is a reason that this is one of Melissa's favorite meals. It is absolutely delicious. All right, we're gonna let that cool for just a minute and then we will come back and sample it. All right, our steak and gravy is ready. I'm telling you this onion gravy, wow. It is so good. I did take one piece and cut it so we could sample a small piece because we're getting ready to eat dinner. We didn't want to have a big piece on our plate. But I want you to look how tender this is. It literally just falls apart. Look at that. It is so good. Baby, you ready for a bite? I am. That, that might be too big for you. Nah, you got it. Mm. That's as tender as a mother's love. That is so good. Mm. Definitely one of my favorites. Mine do. That is delicious. I really hope you try this. It is wonderful. Okay. We would appreciate you hitting that like button. You just click the thumbs up. Click the subscribe button if you've not already done that. You only have to do it once. And if you would click that share button, you can share this to your own page so your friends and family will see it. Remember that right under the video, if you'll click the title, that box will expand. Melissa always puts the written recipe there for you. And our contact information is under that. And then at the very bottom, there's a place where you can leave a comment. So if you want to leave us a comment, we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching our video. I hope you try this so tender Swiss steak, also known as steak and gravy. I think you'll really enjoy it. Most of all, we want you to remember that you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.